post-game drinks with Dieter and Wes. Uh, Warriors beat the Timberwolves by 20 points in the preseason, and we will never discuss the scoreline again. Uh, what we do need to bring up, though, off of this game, Wes, is that Stephen Curry decided to give away the Warriors' regular season playbook. He scored 40 points in, like, 20-something minutes, 25 and a half. And um, it seems like that's going to generally be the theme for the Golden State Warriors this year in wins. What was, what was your main takeaway with Curry's incendiary performance? Well, all of a sudden, the offense looks way better when he's shooting 14 and 19. And Wild. scoring 40 points. It's incredible. Um, but no, suddenly it kind of elevates everybody else's game. D'Angelo Russell had a better game. You mm -hmm. saw nice uh, contributions for guys like Glenn Robinson and, yeah. and Jordan Poole and these other guys. And, you know, that is kind of what makes Steph a two-time MVP is that he's, when he gets like that, it does tend to elevate everybody else around him because of the, the spacing and the gravity that he creates. But he's probably not going to score 40 points like that every game. He actually said this in the press conference. He was 30 minutes late to the arena because he was dealing with Bay Area traffic, welcome to the club. Um, and and so, and he doesn't have a tunnel shot anymore. Right. But it does, it, he still managed to score 40 points, but he also noted he's probably not going to do that every night. Yeah. They might need him to do it every night, yeah. to be fair. One thing I did notice here in this second preseason game, and it wasn't so obvious in the first one, but as you alluded to, when Steph is going, it, it, it sort of brings out the best in everybody. Um, this offense is still extremely derivative from last year's offense and the year before that. They still are trying to do all the motion yeah. stuff. And I, I thought that part of what Steve Kerr was trying to do going into this training camp was maybe make them a bit more direct, a bit more straight line, a bit more pick and roll happy. Right. It seems as if they want to play through the high post. And the guy that they really like doing that with today was Marquise Chris. I think that there's a legitimate roster crunch issue here because it's, it's it, I know that they haven't played with any of their top two centers in uh, Willie Cauley-Stein or Kevon Looney. But, like, Chris looks too good to give up, and I don't know where the guy – I don't know who the guy who's going to have to be sacrificed is, yeah. but, like, they, they got to keep Chris at this juncture. I know it's two games, but they got to keep him, right? I mean, you and I don't get paid, fortunately, or unfortunately, to figure we that don't get part paid. out. <laughs> we don't get paid, period. Breaking news. <laughs> but um, – <laughs> It's going to be a tough job to figure out how to fit him in, and I've, yeah. I've been like looking at it, and there's a couple ways they can do it. It's got to be really creative. I won't go down that rabbit hole right now. I kind of wish you would. <laughs> well, they could sign him to a two-way contract. I think that that's probably the most likely option, right? And if they do that, they can then waive one of these, I'm sorry, trade one of these players that they acquired over the offseason in mid-December. You right. sign him to a two-way contract, you can basically play out those 45 days on the regular roster uh, yes. and then get brought up if the Warriors can somehow trade one of these other players that they acquired over the offseason yeah. into cap space somewhere else. Which would probably require another draft pick. That's right. Which but they're kind of running out of at this juncture. But if it costs you, let's say, a second round pick in the year 2022 or whatever, when the next president is in office, like, you could get... <laughs> if we live that long. Possibly. If if you could get a guy like Marquise Chris, 22 years old right now, I mean, yeah. I think we, we make up a little... We, we make these draft picks a little bit more than what they should be. Like, Marquise True. Chris... Little, he's been a bust throughout his career, but he's got a lot of potential. He's got a lot more potential than who you're going to get in the second round in 2022. Here's how valuable these draft picks are. Marquise Chris was the eighth overall pick in a draft. Right. They just picked him up off the street like two weeks ago. So uh, well, I do think that they could probably get him yeah. because he was no one else wanted him right. uh, going into camp. They probably can get him on that two-way, and then you know, Bob Myers works his magic. But ultimately, someone's going to have to go. The guy who looks like he, he has fallen out of favor, he has just played poorly in the first two games is a guy who started NBA Finals games and Alfonso McKinney. Um, just maybe the magic pixie dust has worn off. I, I don't know, but he, he just he looks lost out there on the court with Alec Burks coming back and some of the bigs coming back. Uh, he needs to put something on tape soon. Otherwise, it's hard to see him being in, in any way a factor for this team, and he might be the sacrificial lamb to maybe make Chris happen without having to go through all of those hoops. What, what, what's been your takeaway of McKinney, who's a guy that – you know, Warriors fans at least know, right. unlike so many of these other guys. What's been your takeaway from him over the first couple of games of the preseason? I mean, you hit it. He hasn't done anything. Yep. He hasn't really done anything to kind of elevate himself. Uh, what he has going for them, it, what he has going for him is that he's a known quantity. But yeah. the other guys become known as the preseason <laughs> comes along. So Especially that's not when they do stuff. Right, exactly. Like, Len Robinson III had a nice game. And yes, I, sir. Steve was talking about him after the game. He liked the, his ability to flip it back to Steph and stuff. I mean, you were talking about, you know, you thought that the offense would be more structured. I thought the offense would be, They were talking about the offense would be more structured. Yeah.
but it turns like what's going to happen. We're going to see this is that the guys who can play without the structure, mm-hmm. guys like Glenn Robinson the third, who recognize that Steph Curry is trailing behind him, he is going yeah. to get on the court a lot more often. Marquise Chris gets the start tonight because he had a nice uh, training camp week. He's nice in the high post. I like him there. He's athletic. He's got, good He's ball got a, skills. He, he knows what to do with the ball. Sees he seems where guys like are an adult the court. out there. Yeah, he just. Maybe, if, the, maybe if Houston IQ didn't field. run a stupid system last year and actually let the guy do something, it right. would have, you know, instead of just standing at the baseline and waiting for James Harden to do something. But yeah, it, it, it is, um, it's still free flowing. It's still the Warriors to a certain extent. Now, their defense is not the Warriors. Right. And that is going to become problematic um, because as much as everyone wants to go well, they, they outscored the Timberwolves by 20. I think the Timberwolves kind of tricked themselves tonight right. as opposed to the Warriors playing any sort of defense. But, um, Things are starting to develop. Things are starting to come along. I'm interested to see how Burks fits into all of this because he was the guy I thought most likely to sort of break out as the wing. He hasn't played yet because of an ankle injury. No one knows when he's going to show up. Um, but I, I, I've loved the energy of Robinson. Tonight was better than the game against the Lakers, but uh, I thought he was okay against the Lakers, to be totally honest. I thought he got kind of a bad rap in that one. Uh, you know that Russell's going to get minutes. The stagger is probably going to be way more intense than we thought. I, I I have not seen a lot of chemistry right to this point in two games between Steph and D'Lo, and I just think that ultimately those are two guys who kind of just need the ball in their hands and, and aren't going to work all that well off of each other, and the Warriors don't have enough depth to where you can kind of force feed that. Yeah. Have you picked up any vibes like that? I mean, tonight was a great template for what the stagger is going to look like. They So in the first preseason game, the minutes were here kind of spotty. They yeah. only played the first half, so you get a huge sample size. But tonight, Steph played the entire uh, first 12 minutes of the game, the whole first quarter. Uh, D'Angelo Russell came out after nine minutes. Yeah. D'Angelo Russell starts the second quarter. Steph's getting his reprieve on the bench. And then they kind of they stagger their minutes throughout that entire quarter until the final three minutes of that first half. That's and that's the what stagger it's gonna right be. there. It's going to be yeah. the final three minutes of the first half, the final three minutes of the second, uh, of the second half of the game. Yeah. They're going to be on the court. So, yeah, they're going to be able to do their own thing for a large portion of the game. But for six really important minutes of the game, they're going to have to figure it out. Before we get out of here, one last thought. They played Jordan Poole in that closing lineup in the second half. Jordan Poole's been really freaking good yeah. in two games. Like, he does not look like a rookie. He's never going to defend anybody. Uh, maybe he'll give some effort. That's cool. Uh, that that backcourt's going to be small as hell. Three guards, three true guards. But, man, like, I, I feel like the offensive firepower with the – those three guys on the court is a lot because Poole just doesn't have a conscience. Right. Uh, takeaways on Poole, I mean, is, is this just a flash in the pan? Is this all a fluke, or is this... Uh, I don't think anyone he's, expected he's got, this. He's got a quiet swagger about him that I think is Some of that swagger is not so quiet. And some of it's not so quiet. Um, but he he's a cat guy, and he kind of reminds me of, like, kind of a, a tiger a little bit, yeah. just sort of hunting his prey, just sort of quietly in the shadows, and then he's going to take a shot, and he's not going to yeah. be afraid to do it. One thing I'll say, I don't know how much we should expect Jordan Poole playing alongside two other guards. The reason they were able to do that tonight was because the Minnesota Timberwolves were out there with Jeff Teague, uh, Andrew Wiggins, Robert Covington, Jake Lehman. I mean, you can be, and they spent the entire 48 minutes of this game hiding one of those guards on Robert Covington or Jake Lehman or one of those guys. So they're, but look, we talk about the Warriors' weaknesses, we're doing it now. Uh, every team in the league has weaknesses. Yep. That's the great part about Kevin Durant leaving is now every team is imperfect. So yes. they're going to have nights where they could do things like this. Um, and they'll, and Steve Kerr will have to figure out what those nights are and, and leverage the roster the way he can. This is how the other 99% has been living yes. all these years. It's quite exhausting. Uh, it, it's really it's really not yeah, It turns enjoyable. out you have to think about things. It's, oh my God, this is going to be a long season. Uh only a few more of these preseason games to go. I think they play the Lakers 42 more times in the preseason. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, you'll be down in L.A. I don't even know when the next game is. I don't think anyone cares when the next game is. The regular season will start at some point against the Clippers. I presume it will be on national television. By then, hopefully, they figure out uh, if they have at least two wings and maybe a center will be healthy. Who knows? Because I'll tell you this, Amari Spellman ain't the guy. All right. Talk to you guys later.